In the previous video, we spoke about differential equations and the method of separation of variables. And we said that the whole point of uh, uh, differential equation to be, to be able to be separable is to put all the x's and the dx's on one side and all the y's and the dy's to the other side. And then once we separate it, then we're just going to apply an integral and try to solve this. So let's go ahead and come up with um, um, an example. So here's going to be part A. So find a general solution to the differential equation. So let's, we want to solve for the value of y. Okay. So the first thing that we want to do is kind of um, try to um, put all of my y's on one side and put all of my x's on the other side. So one of the things that I can see is that um, I can kind of cross multiply. Okay. See how you have a fraction over another fraction. So I'm going to have this dy and this y to the fourth be multiplied to each other. So this guy and this guy. So what I'm going to have is going to be this y to the fourth dy. And then I'm going to have this dx be multiplied to this x squared. So that was going to give me x squared dx. And then this is going to be equal to each other. Okay. So now, um, so now what I did is I noticed that all of my y's are on one side and all of my x's are on another side. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate both sides now. So I'm going to play an integral. Okay, I'm going to integrate this. So the integral of y to the fourth is going to be y to the fifth over 5 is equal to x cubed over 3 plus c. Now, typically, you would add a plus c to both sides. But in this case, um, since we only have, because if I have a plus c over here and a plus c over there, we're just going to have another constant. So i rather just put the plus c on the side where the x is at. Okay. And now notice that now I don't have a derivative anymore. All I just have is my y and my x. So now what this turns out to be is just a regular algebra problem. So if your algebra is very, very uh, spotty, you might have to uh, freshen up a couple skills because this is going to be, after this, just, this just becomes a, a regular algebra problem. So now let me multiply by 5 to all of the sides. So I'm going to multiply by 5. Multiply this by 5, multiply this by 5. So now you're going to be left with y to the fifth power by itself. Then you're going to have is equal to 5, th uh, uh, five thirds x to the power of 3. And then a constant times 5 is just going to be another constant. Okay. And now the, finally, what we want to do is we want to get rid of that fifth root. So the way that we do it is we're going to apply the fifth. Uh, we're going to, we want to get rid of the 5 power. So we're going to apply a fifth root. And what that's going to give me is just y is equal to the fifth root of 5 thirds x cubed plus c. Notice that the plus c is in the inside because when we apply a fifth root, it's applied to the whole thing. Okay. Now you might be wondering, what do we do with that c? Well, you'll figure out in a little bit when we do initial value problems. So let's just continue doing just so that we get a gist of, of differential equations. Okay. All right, so now let's do part B. So part B is going to be y squared, y prime is equal to 4 over x. Okay. Now, typically, I don't like dealing with y prime. I like to deal with dy over dx. So whenever I see a y prime, I just try to move uh, or make it into a, a dy over dx. So this is going to be y squared. Change this to dy over dx is equal to 4 over x. <clears throat> okay. Now notice that I kind of have all of my y. So see how I have a y over here and I have an x over here. So I kind of are, um, I'm almost done. The only thing that I got to do is move that dx to the other side. So the way that I'm going to do that is by multiplying by dx to both sides. And that's going to cancel this guy out. So you're left with y squared dy is equal to 4 over x dx. Okay, and now what we want to do is apply an integral. Okay, so the integral of y squared is going to give me y cubed over 3. The integral of 4 over x is going to be 4 natural log of absolute value of x. Okay, and then a plus c. All right, now let's move the 3 over. So move this 3. So this is going to give me y cubed is equal to 12 ln of absolute value of x plus c. 
And then finally, all we have to do is apply a cubed root to both sides. Okay, so this is going to give me y is equal to the cubed root of 12 ln of absolute value of x plus c. Okay. All right, now let's do another problem. So let's say we have dy over dx plus y equals x. Okay, so here you might think, oh, well, all we got to do is just multiply by dx to the other side and then it'll be separable. Well, not quite, because if I multiply by dx to everything to both sides, well, you can't just multiply it to here. You have to multiply it to every single term. So if I do that, this is going to cancel out, but I have a dy plus y dx is equal to x dx. Oh, that doesn't look right because you have this dx thing. And if I try to divide this out, then you're left with the rest, with, with the beginning part. So if you try to manipulate it any way, it's going to be really difficult to try to figure out what exactly this guy's going to be. There's no way that you can kind of separate this even more. Okay. So this is actually going to be not separable. So there's no way that I can get rid of that dx uh, so that I can have a dy by itself. Okay. That's not, it's not really going to be possible. Okay. So now let's do another problem, part D. So let's say we have y prime over y squared is equal to cosine of x. Okay. So the first thing that we want to be able to do is change the y prime into a dy and dx. So I'm going to have 1 over y squared, because remember the y squared is on the bottom, and then this y prime is going to be dy over dx is equal to cosine of x. Okay. So now all we got to do is move the dx to the other side. So that's going to go away. And what I'm left with is, just write it like this. I'm left with 1 over y squared dy is equal to cosine of x dx. Okay. I can also bring this to the top as y to the negative 2 dy is equal to cosine of x dx. And now we can go ahead and take the integral to both sides. So now this is going to be uh, y to the negative 1 is equal to, uh, with a negative, is equal to the integral of cosine is just going to be sine of x and then plus c. We can move the negative over. So we have y to the negative 1 equals negative sine of x plus c. Okay, I can write y to the negative 1 as 1 over y is equal to negative sine x plus c. Okay, so now what we can do is you can move the y over. Okay, move this y over. So I have 1 is equal to y negative sine x plus c. And then I can now divide this negative sine x plus c to the other side. So now I can divide negative sine x plus c. So y is equal to 1 over negative sine x plus c. That's going to be my general solution. Okay, so um, we can do many problems if, you, if you'd like, but this is basically the general gist. You want to be able to separate them. Watch out when it's not separable. Um, the one thing that you can maybe do is that if you solve for this derivative, right, if you solve for dy over dx, and you kind of get a multiplication of x times the multiplication of, of a function with y, then you should be able to see that it's going to be separable. As you can see, if I subtract, subtract, subtract y over, you're not going to get a multiplication of x times a multiplication of y. So I guess this could be a little trick that you can probably think about whenever you're trying to see if something is separable or not.